This is Twit. And speaking of what a sad mess <laughs> the greater internet has become. <laughs> yes. And of not letting any of that mess into our lives, one of our listeners, Terrence Cam, pointed me to a recent piece in Bleeping Computer titled Cyber Criminals Pose as Helpful, in air quotes, Stack Overflow Users to Push Malware. Okay, now, for those who have never encountered it, Stack Overflow is a forum community of developers of widely ranging skill. It's essentially a place where coders can help one another. When I've been struggling with a programming problem, such as when I was working to get server-side, on-the-fly code signing to work remotely with a certificate stored in an HSM, which as far as I know, no one has ever done before, the Stack Overflow site would often be listed among Google's search results. And I'm a member there, since I've enjoyed answering questions and giving back when I can. So, Bleeping Computer writes, Cyber criminals are abusing Stack Overflow in an interesting approach to spreading malware, answering users' questions by promoting a malicious PyPy package that installs Windows information stealing malware. Sonatype researcher Axe Sharma, who's also a writer at Bleeping Computer, discovered this new PyPy package is part of a previously known cool package campaign named after a string in the package's metadata that targeted Windows users last year. This PyPy package is named uh, PyToiler and was uploaded by threat actors to the PyPy repository over the weekend. Claiming to be an API management tool, um, malicious packages like this, they write, are usually promoted using names similar to other popular packages. You know, a process we've talked about before known as typo squatting. However, with this package, the threat actors took a more novel approach by answering questions on Stack Overflow and promoting the package as a solution. As Stack Overflow is... Bleeping Computer writes, is a widely used platform for developers of all skill sets to ask and answer questions. It provides a perfect environment to spread malware disguised as programming interfaces and libraries. Sonotypes Ak Sharma said in their report, <clears throat> excuse me, quote, we further noticed that a Stack Overflow account it had a nonsense name of E-S-T-A-Y-A -A space G, created roughly two days ago, is now exploiting the platform's community members who are seeking debugging. It's directing them to install this malicious package as a solution, again in air quotes, to, to their issue, even though the solution is unrelated to the questions being posed by developers. In this case, the PyToiler package contains a setup.py, you know, Python file, that pads a, 60, a base64 encoded command to, uh, which executes with spaces so that unless you enable word wrapping in your IDE, uh, you know, your, uh, your integrated development environment or text file editor, the, this base64 blob will be pushed all the way out past the right margin and off screen so you'll never see it. When, when that blob of base64 is deobfuscated, the command will download an executable named runtime.exe from a remote site and run it. They write, this executable is a Python program converted into an exe that acts as an information-stealing malware to harvest cookies, passwords, browser history, credit cards, and other data from the user's web browsers. It also appears to search through documents for specific phrases, and if found, steals the data in them as well. All of this information is then sent back to the attacker who can sell it on the dark web markets or use it to breach further accounts that are owned by the victim. 
They said, while malicious pie pie packages and information stealers are nothing new, the cyber criminals strategy now to pose as helpful contributors on Stack Overflow is an interesting new approach as it allows them to exploit the site's trust and authority within the, com- the coding community. This approach serves as a reminder of the constantly changing tactics of cyber criminals and unfortunately illustrates why you can never blindly trust that some, you know, what someone shares online. Instead, developers must verify the source of all packages they add to their projects. And even if it feels trustworthy, check the code. <laughs> and they said with word wrap enabled for unusual or obfuscated commands which will be executed. I have a picture in the show notes of, of the window, and you can see where it, there is a, a, a Python class named install command, and then uh, a, 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 um, a definition of run, which is going to print something, and then there you, you, you can see a big bunch of white space. Well, that's all spaces that will push this huge green blob of base 64 encoded code far off to the right so that if someone did not have word wrap enabled they'd never see this they they would look at it and go huh well okay i don't quite get what it's doing but looks fine nothing bad there when in fact there is a big blob of badness which uh uh the 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 exec function will deobfuscate and then run. So anyway, I'll just note that before the end of today's podcast, the security researcher, Kevin Beaumont, is going to show us, despite Microsoft's claims to the contrary, that the database underlying Microsoft's new recall system can, in fact, be exfiltrated remotely, does not require system privilege, and can be accessed by any other user on the same machine. That means that Recall's SQLite database is 100% vulnerable to exactly this sort of info stealing malware. So it's not like Microsoft has done created some miracle that is going to protect this database. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.